where your white nose hairs come from up <laughs> further <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Nickelodeon by way of Wellsville with four wonderful actors. So without further ado, let's flip the remote and see who's on. Our first guest is an actor, comedian, and podcaster whose credits include Storks, Workaholics, and Beware the Lake. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of music manager Gustavo Rock in Big Time Rush. Please welcome Stephen Kramer Glickman. Hey, hi, hello, hi, hey, hello. And guten tag, and, and buenos dias, and all that other fun stuff. Steven, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? I am well in my corner of Florida. How are things in your corner of the world? They're good. I'm here in uh, Los Angeles, and it's nice. Today, it's only 99 degrees, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's something. That, that's, that's something. That's an improvement the past few weeks. It was breaking 100 out there for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty gross. It was pretty gross. Uh, yes, indeed. Well, Steven, absolute pleasure to have you here, man. Thanks for Thanks having me. Good. I love my Absolutely. Nickelodeon family. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, brother. Thanks for joining us. And next, she is an actress whose roles include the Steve Harvey Show, Dodgeball, and Good Burger. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Mish Hushbaum, the loud librarian, the host of Vital Information, and various other characters from all that. Please welcome Lori Beth Denberg. Hello, kitty cats. It's nice to almost see you. <laughs> Indeed. Lori, how are you doing? I am just doing okay. I'm super glad to be here. I have my super ghetto orange background for Nickelodeon because, you know, that's the kind of set decoration I'm capable of. Ah, well, it's like you have a lovely couch. I'll come Thank you. you on that. Yes, indeed, indeed. So, Lori, all is well in your corner of the world? It is. I'm also in Los Angeles. So, yeah, it's been 100 degrees and I've been doing my best. Hey, any, anybody doing okay is the new awesome in these crazy days. Right? right? Exactly. So, absolutely. Absolutely glad to have you here in good spirit and good health. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And next, he is an actor known for Home Alone and Slackers. Today, he joins us as Big Pete Wrigley from the Adventures of Pete and Pete. Please welcome Michael Ciamarana. Hey y'all! Hey, thanks, hey, thanks for having me. I am uh, whoa. Hey Stephen. Hey Lori Beth. Hey Patty. And uh, coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York. Here, the land of couches. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's a very, very nice couch you have there too. Some lovely throw pillows. I, I knew you were a man of taste when I met you a couple of years ago. We dined together, and I'm glad to see my hypothesis has not been proved wrong. Mm. Appreciate it. You know what? I haven't had such good shrimp and grits as the last time I was in the South, and I have to go back sometime. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Please let me do what you do. So, uh, ah, boss, how have you been? Very well. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate it. Uh, keep him busy, trying to go to the beach a little bit, but uh, not in the drought situation that the West Coast is in. So a little bit more thankful. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Michael, as always, pleasure to have you here. Thank you for joining us on our online forum. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Happy finally... Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. And finally, he is an actor and musician whose body of work includes the Magic School Bus, the Mighty Ducks, and Grand Theft Auto V. Today, he joins us to discuss Janet Agassius and other characters from all that, <laughs> as well as little Pete Wrigley from the Adventures of Pete and Pete. Please welcome Daddy Tamaroy! Hello, Hello, everyone in the webosphere. Well, whoa. Uh, how you doing, Danny? I'm doing very well, very well. Uh, like Michael, I'm here in Brooklyn, New York. And, uh, you know, maybe it's going to rain. I don't know. I sent my wife and kid out anyway. I gave him a big umbrella said, get out of here. Daddy's using the Internet for a couple hours. Absolutely. When you, so, when, you, when you come back, bring us a couch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know about the couch thing. And I, I'm trying to have the best Internet capable. And uh, so I'm in my, uh, truth be told, I'm in my bedroom. This isn't a real couch. It's actually Ooh. a pillow. Whoa. <laughs> Power of anyway, it's just hanging out here on a cool couch. No big deal. <laughs> oh, good. oh, well, honored guests, once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. So glad to have you here today. Our team is going through our chat room right now to pull out questions for you. In the meantime, I'm just going to throw this out. You all worked on some really fun shows. And uh, being comedies, they can be pretty chaotic uh, for each of you. What, would you. what was the craziest day you were, recall from the sets on your various shows? Oh boy. I mean, 
I've I, I've had a couple. Did, I'll say, I'll did say you get buried really, in a hole right away? Right away. At seven years old, the first episode of Pete and Pete was this little vignette, and they buried me up to my neck in sand or in good, dirt. Good and I and it was like July, and the, the shtick with the little Pete kids, and he wears a long sleeve shirt even in the summer, and I was wearing a turtleneck, and you know it, I got very hot, and and uh, I don't know. All I know is that that happened, and I'm still here, which is good. But I would say really like one of the coolest things is being able to dump slime on me, not Nickelodeon slime per se, but oh. the slime they used in Aliens, okay? The, all the white clear stuff that was just, you know, oh, wow. that's that's how you sell it to an 11 year old kid. It's like, hey kid, we're gonna dump this on you, but guess what? It's from Alien. And I said, yes, that's cool. I would like to do that. That's fine. Yeah. Just, just drench me. <laughs> I love that. Uh, fair, fair, good one. one. Who's got another? Uh, when we were doing, uh, in the middle of Big Time Rush, we did an episode called Prank Wars where, um, everybody had to hit me in the face with pies. Uh, (laughs) and it was all, um, whip the uh, like cream, like cream pies. And, uh, so the goal they were going to hit me with, uh, six. Uh, six cream pies in the face. And then uh, they said to me, right, we were outdoors. They said, what would you rather do? You want whipped cream or you want shaving cream? And I said, uh, whipped cream. What kind of person would want shaving cream? Um, it was 106 degrees out. That, uh, the, the, that, tur- that six pies turned into 10 takes. So I went sixty cream pies of sour milk in the pipe, <laughs> and they had to put Dear um, God. gasoline up my nose just to not make me vomit on set. And I I reeked I reeked of um of sour milk for like probably oh. two days. And I showered I showered so hard did not freaking matter at all. It was. Oh. So- that was gross. Yeah. Large, large cream. coffee, two sugars. Any cream? No. <laughs> no thank you. Yeah, that was that was probably one of the more ridiculous uh, days. Uh, it smells like somebody's been milking a cow in here. <laughs> I, I just can't believe the person that asked that question didn't have the wherewithal to say now that it's dairy and it's hot, so it's gonna get kind of yucky real quick. I, Man. Yeah, I did not. <laughs> That was pretty. Uh, oh, the other one was uh, um, uh, just real quick, but we had a swimming pool on our set, and uh, and and it was just very very exciting. And uh, I was supposed to run and do a, a cannonball into the pool, and they were like, "Oh, we have a stunt guy to do that." And I was like, "Stunt guy? I don't need a stunt guy. I can do it on my own cannonball." And they were like, "Steven, the pool is five feet deep. You're gonna hit the bottom." And I was like. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. And I jumped in and I landed on my left hip and my entire left leg went numb. And then I got out of the pool and Scott Fellows, the creator of the show, was like, oh, I missed it. Can you do it again? And I was like, I can't. Uh (laughs) And and landed on my other hip and... um, and then I was just, I just couldn't, I was in so much pain. And then they, then they, uh, I let the, the guy take over and, and actually do the stun. And <laughs> to day, no feeling, side of my, uh, side of my left uh, hip. Really? Still, uh, oh, God. Yep. Yeah. Still, still but you under- did it for the art. I did it for the art. <laughs> if you're a real actor, you'll do you anything. St- you'll eat dirt. Eat dirt for me. Do it. You oh, sacrificed yeah. yourself for your craft. Very well. <laughs> what, you gotta do. <laughs> oh, what about you, Lori? I. It's funny that most of our stories have to do with getting gross stuff dumped all, on our heads. All of them. All of them. <laughs> but uh, what came to my mind when you said that was, it was more one of those moments where I go, what is my job? It was a Good Burger sketch, and I was playing Connie Muldoon, and Ed took the, you know, ketchup and mustard and went like this. So I was covered with ketchup and mustard. And then the scene called, he was going to float away at the end, like fly away. So in behind the scenes, you know, moment for everyone watching, that means we had to stop. Everyone has to freeze. 
They have to get Kel into this whole harness that connects to the wires to fly him away. It took a while. And I'm sitting there, standing there, covered with this stuff <laughs> having, and frozen so that I'm right where I'm supposed to be when we start up again. And it was a long time. I mean, it was 10 minutes or more. And I'm just like, what is my job? What is happening right now? <laughs> so then they get him hooked up and we finish the scene. And then we have to do the scene again. So I get all cleaned up, get there again, get covered. It was like my circle of hell. Like this would never end. And it's those kind of things where you go, what? I should have finished high school. <laughs> I should have tried harder. You, you, don't, you don't relish that memory? Oh, oh Mike, dad jokes already. Hey, uh, and then, of wow. course, there was the, 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 the birth of the big ear of corn, which was just made for one episode, for one, like, cold open, no big deal. And I just went, my job required someone to build a six-foot ear of corn, and it's awesome, and it's super huggable. I love this corn. And I told <laughs> the writers, and that is the reason that the corn continued and became mm. the fifth beetle of all that. Wow. Nice. That, is, that is cool. Oh, wow. Michael, bring us home. Uh, no... Uh... <laughs> No pressure on the gross out, but I'll have to say that in the in the tradition of bodily functions and gross fluids, uh, probably getting held down by the bully and having mucus written on my forehead repeatedly in marker. Uh, because between takes, we didn't do much other than just spray rubbing alcohol on my forehead and scrape it off again. So that's why I have this forehead to this day. Uh, so, so I think we could only do about four takes before the forehead was too raw. We just had to move on. Wow. But it, was, it was cold that day. And I can remember the mucus being written in purple pen, like a felt tip marker, not, not one of those Sharpies, luckily. Mm. Okay. Oh, fair, fair. Oh, well, well, thank it's you, not everybody. Like Nickelodeon is a terrible place to work. <laughs> Statistic <laughs> people <laughs> like to torture kids. Uh, like, not one of us was like, and then we did this, and it was so hilarious. Uh, no. We'll end up with medical. Well, we want to give the fans something they don't already right. know. We all came up with workman's comp stories. <laughs> yeah, after yeah. This. It, yeah, basically. Look, I've, like, I've been it, in it, litigation it, for 22 years about it, and, and it's not going very far. <laughs> <laughs> if if, if Willy Wonka got into entertainment instead of candy. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> Eliminate the contenders. <laughs> well, thank you for indulging my question. We're ready to go to our audience questions. So let's go ahead and roll our first one, which comes from Dante, who asks, what is your favorite Nickelodeon game show? Well, I, I'll speak for Danny and say, figure it out. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> he might have a better one. <laughs> figure it out is definitely my favorite. Not just because I was, um, you know, the star and the best one at the game. Okay. But um, <laughs> you know, growing up, even growing up for me, it was like all about Double Dare. You know, and just like the craziness of it and the messiness. And I just remember those big pancakes, like find the flag in the pancake. It's not that hard. Meanwhile, when I tried to find the flag in the nose one time, I could not get it. So it That's was. Right. We, we it, did have our dreams come true in San Diego a couple of years ago. Yeah, San Diego Comic Con. Dare. It was the 30th anniversary of Double Dare. And what? so um, me, Danny, Tim Burley, and Josh and Kel were there. And we, with other like fans, just ran the obstacle course. And I was the pick the nose, get the flag out of the nose. But the dude who put the flag in there was twice as tall as me <laughs> and legit, legit put the flag farther up than I could have ever reached. I would have had to like go fully in the nose to get it. <laughs> so I'm sitting there struggling. I can see it. I'm like, I can't get it. Mark Summers is just making fun of me. And I was just like, this is the biggest moment of failure of my life. You don't know stress until you're 
under duress like that, right. and on top of it, having Mark Summers just talk smack at you oh my the God. entire time about how bad you are. At it's not the old factory nerve. I couldn't get it. I legitimately <laughs> couldn't get it. Where your white nose hairs come from? Up further. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, so Double Dare was awesome. I did love Figure It Out. That's where Danny and I really fell in love. It's true. It was on it's Figure true. It Out. So it's very true. We only got one season together on all that, but we got I don't know how many animal styles and three. No, we did three styles, together. Three seasons. Three seasons of Figure yeah. It Out. You did the most. I did the second most. You did. No, no You're big deal. It's not. It's not something I pride myself on and tell my child about every other day. Hey, do you oh, know I was the second most contestant uh, uh, <laughs> panelist on Figure It Out? It's me. It's me. Yeah. It's me. Just print so out daddy's certificate. What was your, what was your favorite? Um, well, I mean, I wasn't very much of an athletic kid, but I did enjoy watching Guts very much. Mm. And thinking about how I wish I could do stuff like that. And mm. then I get to work in Nickelodeon Studios when Guts was still filming, where the aggro crag was still. And I got about halfway up it before people came in and got very mad at me because it wasn't safe. But I got to climb half the aggro crag. There's no visual proof of this, but mm. I did it. I know that I did it because I got in a lot of trouble for it. I had, to, I had to get two. You know, I you have usually, the reprimands. They usually only have to tutor you for three hours a day, but they were like nine hours today, pal. Mm. You're banking. <laughs> oh my god! Mm. I did. Yeah. Uh, I did one of those. Uh, I did that Nickelodeon show, Brain Surge. Oh, yeah. You remember that show? Yeah. Uh, and it was hosted by the by Jeff Stuff Stephen Stephen. Do you know what I'm talking about? Same Captain. guy. Who, yeah, it's the same guy who did uh, uh, Figure It Out, like the redo of Figure It Out. Because we did Figure It Out also. Um, oh, that's right. And Matt Bennett was the Slime King, but I was really yeah. the Slime King. And he never gave me any credit for it. That I'm the sucked. real Slime King. <laughs> Jeff, the host, came up to me right before we started. And he said, uh, I said, uh, uh, how is this? Uh, how is this game? Is it fun? And he goes, you're going to lose. And I, this is the host. <laughs> And I go, why? Because you're old. You're old. Oh. You're, you're going to lose very badly because you're very old. And I was like, what? I go, that's such a bunch of bull. That's not fair. I was like, ah, I mean, maybe I'm really good at it. And he goes, no, you're bad at it. <laughs> and then I lost. <laughs> he could see the future. <laughs> he just knew. He just knew I was going to fail miserably. Where were you on that day in the set with the pies? <laughs> I loved, I loved um, Double Dare, though, man. As a kid watching Double Dare, I was like, that seemed like the most fun humanly possible, you know? That was the best. My brother and I were convinced that we could uh, that we could rule Double Dare, having watched it for several years after school. And then I simultaneously had him convinced that it was a conflict of interest because I worked for Nickelodeon. So I would, <laughs> we would never, we would never be allowed to display our superiority. Um, uh, and we had, we um, had all the trivia. We had all the moves. We knew we could do the physical challenges. Cause I mean, what do you do as a kid besides dig snot out of your note? Well, we did other stuff too. I'm sure. Like fine flags like and pancakes and, you used like legal loopholes to torture your brother. <laughs> we would okay. have the most fun, but section 18 of my contract. Yeah, yeah some paragraph C says no go. So I also like Nick Arcade very much. I thought it kicked butt and it was way ahead of its time. That was a great game, too. Yeah, that was a great show. Yeah, one of my uh, dear friend of mine was on that show as a kid, and it's funny he had his kid and play. Uh, the, he Black he shows up, up like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say, like, hey, Ruben, kid and play haircut, nice. I'm a Double Dare fan myself. I I remember one episode where they had a very smart kid on there that was confounding them because the obvious question to physical challenge, he actually is, oh, that was the Treaty of Ghent, you know. Uh, that's correct. All right, next question. <laughs> yeah. Don't I can stone. I can stone them as long as you want me to. <laughs> I've read my Cyclopedia Britannica. I I know it's one of those. All right, so much for that. So, but Dante, great question to start us off with. Thank you. And this one from Alex. Oh, what was your audition or auditions for Nickelodeon like? Please, the floor. 
being Michael? in a room being when in a room with a lot of redheads is not an uncommon <laughs> experience for me from the ages of five to fifteen. So I was used to it. And uh and they were nice. Um I know it was hard to get parking in Midtown around that time. So I probably took the train to the audition. The the callback was pretty cool as far as being able to read with Danny. I think that was the second callback, being able to read with Danny for Pete Pete. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that was awesome meeting Chris, uh, Will, and Catherine right there in one of the first in one of the first auditions. So, all in all, intimidating, uh, full of red hairs, but ultimately satisfying. Hmm. Right I yeah. felt this, and I felt the same way, Mike. Except when I when younger. I went in for oh, my a little bit, oh, yeah, four years younger. And when I auditioned, Chris and Will and Catherine walked out of the audition with me, which never happens. Said and your so son mom, needs help. And yeah, my mom's sitting there being like, "Oh God, what did he do? Did he curse at him? Did he, <laughs> did he kick him? He didn't did, kick did him. He, he didn't kick him, did he? Oh yeah. God, he was wearing steel toe boots today. Uh, <laughs> uh no, but they just said that they liked me and they wanted to pair me up with some somebody and come back, you know, next week. And I've known Mike ever since, since 1989, going strong. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Nice. Lori Beth, how, how was yours? Uh... Uh, mine was kind of surreal. It was my first professional audition. And I uh, had won a drama competition in high school. And there was a showcase of all the first place scenes. And the producers from all that were there scouting for kids. So they called me and said, hey, do you want to come in an audition? And I was like, well, whatever. Okay. So I just went in. They had some material. I, I you know, did it. I did what I do. And, um, you know, there were people in the room that I'd recognized as actors that had been on TV. And so the whole thing was just kind of surreal, but kind of a lark to me. I was like, whatever. Um, I wasn't like, this is my big break. Um, and then I, you know, went home and then I got one call back. And then they called and said that I got the job. So it was all very like, all right. So I wasn't, I think it helped that I wasn't in there like, trying to get the part i thought it was a yeah. goof i thought it was a wank and that's and that's held true for the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> every gig is a wank yep mine was pretty weird um i thought um i i i first of all i thought i was auditioning for a cartoon because I just met with Sarah Noonan at Nickelodeon for voiceover stuff. Because I was I was coming off of uh, a job at uh, DreamWorks doing. I had been playing Shrek in Shrek the Musical on Broadway. That was where I had gotten my start. Was oh, doing. Oh wow, that's so cool. Yeah, doing that. So I was I came right from there to Nickelodeon, and I was like, oh, so I mean, she was voiceover like that. She was a voiceover casting person. So. I was like, oh, okay, that's what it is. And then I show up for the audition and I'm wearing like a hoodie that has like bang, pow, you know, action figure stuff all over it and a, and a hat like this. And uh, everybody at the audition is in a suit and tie. <laughs> All in their <laughs> they're all silver, gray hair. They all look like um, Ari Gold from Entourage, but like different versions of that, like that and Mad Men, basically. And I read the breakdown, and the breakdown is like live action, and we're looking for a silver fox. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I was 29. And I was like, I am not whatever this is. Why am I here? <laughs> and I call my manager and I go, what, it, what? I was like, you messed up, dude. You got me. I left work for this, you know. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And he was like, no, 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 no. It's uh, the manager of a band. And I was like, yeah, I know. But that's, but they're looking for like Silver Fox, you know, whatever, whatever. And he goes, no, like, that thing that you do where you pretend like you're a big deal, do that thing. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. 
And like I picked up the script and the, the script was like a lot of yelling, like, how dare you disrespect me, all that kind of stuff. So, and then there was a little space for making up your own line of dialogue. Mm. And uh, I wrote like four quick lines and uh, I went in and then I did the audition and the line I made up with was, I made up was, uh, I gave Ice Cube his name. Before his name was Ice Cube, it was Ira Schmoltovich or something like this. And I was like, <laughs> I, like I, you know, I, I gave David Spade his first rap album. Like I just had like a whole bunch of weird <laughs> Like I helped design the Toyota Tacoma. You have no idea what I've accomplished. Like, just a whole bunch of weird things. And uh, they laughed a whole bunch. And then I was like, all right, okay, bye. And I walked out and started walking across the lot and uh, got a phone call. And they were like, go back, go back, go back, go back. And I like ran back across to, to the room. And they were like, okay, okay. Um, the director wants to watch you do, do the audition again. And I was like, okay. And then I did it again. That was Friday. They called Saturday and said I had the job. Sunday awesome. I did my fitting, and Monday I started filming. Whoa! Wow! And, and it was like it was crazy. It was crazy. I, I mean, I think you came. Family. I think you came back to the audition, and everybody else was wearing the Bang Pow hoodie and the. <laughs> and the yeah. <laughs> oh yeah! I mean, it was it was insane. It was just such an insane like you know change around, but. They uh, and then on the first day of filming, Scott Fellows turned to me and he said, "Wow, it's so amazing we we were able to find a funny forty year old that hadn't been discovered yet." And I said, "I'm." Thank you, Alex. Great question. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, "You got to take better care of yourself, buddy." <laughs> you ever heard of the music industry, man? Come on, man. I'll, I'll take care of myself. I take care of myself. You want to see me do a cannibal? <laughs> uh, Alex, that was a great one. And here's one from Madison who wants to know, what do you do in your free time? Hmm. I haven't I haven't had free time in two years and a couple months. Yeah. Why? Uh, Got a four and a half year old. Can't know free time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the free time goes so fast. I like to leisurely lay on the beach and FaceTime Danny and Mike to tell them how great my life is. <laughs> While they do nothing but clean up baby fluids <laughs> and fight with their other people. And Don't spill that. Their, that was the slime from aliens. Watch their lives drain, drain away. I like to sleep. I'm really good at sleeping. I love animals. I help people with their dogs a lot. And I travel and I, you know... I mean, I was just going to say I do a lot of different projects, but I do my, <laughs> when I'm not obligated to other people, I work, I work a lot on my podcast, um, which is uh, Bad Advice with Lori Beth Denberg, which actually I give good advice, but I just got stuck on the name. I thought it was funny. So now we're here, but I do try to work really hard on that. And um, yeah, I just kind of. I just kind of hang out and chill. I'm I'm itching for a road trip. I love road trips. I want to go on a road trip. I feel like there. that's pointedly you're looking at me, Lori Beth, mm -hmm. when you say that. No, I'm looking at the screen. You're on the screen. Okay. Oh, and I go to the Hollywood Bowl constantly in Los Angeles. It during the summer, it's my favorite venue. I go all the time. And you should all come and go there. Did you see that live Simpsons thing there, uh, LB? I saw it twice. That was a few years ago. Yeah. Wow. Three about that. years ago was I just went last night with my friend to see Tchaikovsky with fireworks. Oh, oh my God. It was I, awesome. I remember when Imagine Dragons opened for Tchaikovsky, it was much better. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what's <laughs> funny. There's little smoking areas at the Hollywood Bowl. They're just like there. And then I went once for the 80s night and the smoking area was like the whole lobby of this one section. <laughs> and I'm like, the smoking area is never this big for the symphony. Hmm. I wonder why. I, wonder. I know. Hmm. So and then the B-52s killed it that night. Wow. It was can't so be, Can't beat that. Can't beat that. No. Anyway, it certainly sounds like I have a lot of free time, but don't <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> be fooled. <laughs> uh, uh, so, if anyone can give me a job, let's work on that. <laughs> okay, fair. Uh, Michael, how about you? 
Uh, chasing after my son, riding bikes, playing soccer, watching movies, uh, a little bit of volunteering in the garden, uh, uh, making peace between my neighbors. Oh, that's very nice. nice. Sounds like there's a story there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Star-crossed lovers mm. or uh, skinheads and ethnics? Which no, one? no. It's kind of like a, just a neighborhood uh, squabble. Okay. Is the landlord situation taken care of? Do they get oh, their refrigerator? Do they get oh, the refrigerator Lord. out of your apartment, Michael? God, the, so tired of having a half uh, half uh, assembled refrigerator. It's <laughs> oh, dear. got the real oh, deal. God. Oh dear! Oh dear! So I, didn't bring, I didn't mean to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Patty wants to move on because apparently household incidents and landlord issues aren't rapturously exciting. It's not time. <laughs> no, it's not rapturously exciting. I don't want. I don't want to delve too much into ongoing legal things, or whatever. I mean, tell us about the peace garden. Is it? Is it the garden that everybody says? I tell you what, let's all work together and plant a seed and build a garden. We'll all eat whatever comes up next month if we're all still talking to each other. Just trying to teach the little guy to volunteer. You know help out and volunteer Ooh. and he likes oh, digging and oh digging gosh. in the dirt and stuff so all right that's, that's really sweet that is cool all right steven what's your free time go to um i have a pug um so i get to spend a lot of time with her her name is jelly donut she is uh very small and fat and more of a ball than a than a dog she's like a like a pillow with eyeballs <laughs> uh, I, I like spending time with her and uh uh i've been uh you know like during the during the pandemic like one of the really big like weird things that happened was like um i've always done music stuff but it's always been you know like a hobby you know uh and then in the pandemic i was like well i got nothing but free time there's nothing it's just me and my pug alone in our whole play so i started uh like like making a lot of music stuff and uh and then uh w working with because you could go in a recording studio and be by yourself you know and then you could sure. you know talk to musicians in like new york and send them tracks and then they could send stuff back and so i i ended up recording an entire album uh with uh people that i uh, mostly I was never in the same room as which was really really cool and it came out uh four days ago and wow. it's uh it's doing really well it's uh the yeah so it's been it's been good um I did a bunch of covers I don't write music so I did like a bunch of covers and one of the songs was a CeeLo song and he uh he posted my cover on TikTok and was like this album's Whoa. fire and this whole, it was just like it's oh, wow. so it's been very, very gratifying cool. yeah it's been really really nice to like kind of have something that uh kind of is like my own thing you know for and it's weird too because you know we're all all of us are just a bunch of freaking goofballs so like doing something that's not that's not funny is really weird like it feels really <laughs> weird to be like take me seriously and people are like um okay you know and it's uh, yeah that's super uncomfortable but also um a, a good time you know it's been it's it's been a stretch it's like stretching a little right bit, on you know? Very i'm nice. glad to know you didn't frank zap it i'm very glad frank to know it? was that what do you, what do you mean well like just mean that like he goof. yeah he's like a goof I mean, he, but oh. he had he had the chops to back it up. But I mean, you know, he was yeah. all about music kind of being, you know, oh, as weird and silly and ridiculous as you want it to be. Oh, nonstop! I've had like because I'm I'm a stand up comic. I've been doing stand up 17 years, and like you start telling comedians that you're doing an album, and they're like, "Oh, great! Like, where'd you record it?" And you're like, "In a recording studio." And they're like, yeah. "What? Why?" <laughs> So you're like, it's a music not at album. Caroline's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're like, well, music, I like comedy music, and you're like, no, just, just regular music, regular music. <laughs> it's like just so weird, but you know, yeah. but it was fun. I had a good time no matter what. So uh, that's all right. Uh, and let's roll another one. And this comes from Crazy Mike, who wants to know what is a dream role for each of you. I uh, I slipped this question in myself. Uh, I, gave, <laughs> I gave myself this. I gave myself this name so I would know it was my question. So because I knew I planted this for myself, and I'll just say, 
uh, right off the jump, as, be, as befitting my questioner, uh, Vincent Van Gogh. I would really love to do a Vincent Van Gogh biopic, um, not like Scorsese, um, just something maybe like placed in the modern day a little bit. But that would be a thing for me. Whoa, that's a good one. That's a yeah. Good one. yeah. Thanks, yeah. Crazy Mike. <laughs> My dream role would be if uh, Supreme Court Judge Elena Kagan did anything, <laughs> because if she did anything that would get herself in the media, I'd be on SNL very quickly. You'll be you'll be the supporting actor just in the RBG and Google, in the RBG go, field. That's right. Just go and Google Elena Kagan, and you will understand. It's it's uncanny. It's uncanny. <laughs> the two of you. I'm doing it right uh, now. Like you're kind of all doing it. Right. Like your doing mom. It. Uh, producer Paul, bring up a picture. <laughs> yeah, like Danny, you kind of look like your mom. But if I had to choose, which woman was your mom between Eleanor Kagan? Yeah. <laughs> and her hair looks less red in that picture oh than normal. God. Yeah, yeah. Oh it's, God, it's that's hilarious. It's, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> It's pretty good. But if she doesn't do anything, that's the one. If she that's doesn't do the anything, one. then I'm, you know, gonna be right. I'm gonna I'm gonna be older Brendan Fraser in Brendan Fraser's biopic. Oh my god. Cool. <laughs> oh do we pour one out for that? Or no. Oh, no, I'm 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 okay with that. That's I mean I'm just putting no, it, in it was pouring that I can that these I, are this is tangible for me, guys. Okay? I understand. <laughs> I did. I did. Th th these questions opportunity to put out in the universe. Hey, if any casting agents are watching, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So we got a Van Gogh, a Supreme Court chest. All right, Lori Beth, what's the dream role? <laughs> I don't know about the dream role, but I grew up doing theater and musical theater, and I loved it. And I would love to do a legitimate, you know, theater production with Jelly Donut. You guys should do it right now. Oh, collab. yeah. <laughs> I would love if we could get Jelly Donut on the screen, but I don't know if that's I'll, I'll try it again. I'll try it again. Oh, we, 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 are, we, we, love, we love meeting pets here at GalaxyCon Live. So yeah, but so any, any like a, a real, you know, stage production, I think I would really, really love to do. Get, get back on the boards? Absolutely. Exactly. Oh. Oh. The Jelly Donuts in my neighborhood are called Polchecks. <laughs> They're just like a little Polish donut. And that, that's what he used to total pole check right there. Look at him. Hi, Bubba. Uh, Paul, blow up, the, blow up the image there. Let's get a good look at the, at the jelly donut. Uh, oh. This I is producer it. credit. I want to play. I want to play the voice of of a of jelly donut. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I do. that's my dream. Uh, Dude, you're gonna get like 89 people going like i want a private chat with jelly donut <laughs> uh so steven is the dream role an animated dog or is something else up your sleeve um i'd like to you know i i'd like to go uh, uh i'd like to play someone's dad uh on uh on like a nickelodeon show i i like to do a multicam show and play a dad like a really bad dad but i'd like to be on one of the i've never done a multicam that's the only thing uh really in when it comes to like tv or film or things animation all that kind of stuff i've done a lot of weird stuff but I have not, I've I've voiced a lot of weird things and I've gotten to be in a lot of strange stuff, but I have not gotten to be on a multicam with an with like the audience, like the live audience thing. I god, I would do anything to do something like that. That is oh, man. Nice. We're like the opposite. Because I you've done Broadway and a lot of voiceover work. Those are two things I would love to do. And I've done primarily multicam stuff, which is great. Oh, You'd be god. great at it too. And it seems like that would be so much fun. Yeah, I know, you know, the voiceover stuff is so is such a good time, but it's also like I did um, I did this movie called Monster Hunter Legends of the Guild, which is like a like an anime anime yeah movie. Yeah. All right, um, it comes out August twelfth on Netflix. We made it five years ago, and it's been sitting for five years. 
Wow. Like it's been just on a shelf because Monster Hunter the movie with Mila Jovovich and Ron Perlman came out, and then they were like, "Oh, we can't put this out if that's out." So it just sat in a box for like years. That's the only thing with with animation that like gets tricky is you know you work on it for like three or four years and it's you know you're like oh god yeah. but, but i get it. to go act and not have to get hair and makeup done that's the dream that is really good too that's i'm working on Cico every day so you know <laughs> i'm i'm 20 i'm gonna go I'm with just the bow tie when i record <laughs> i want you want to hear a horror well i'll tell you a very quick horrible story um uh i i once uh had to I got, oh man, this is a bad, this is a bad story. <laughs> tell this. I should not tell this live on. Um, I, I was asked uh, by a terrible, terrible ex girlfriend to be on a news program and talk about how great she was. Um, and I really, really didn't want to go, but I was kind of forced into going. And so I went to 2020 to the, to the news station in a full tuxedo. And I did my interview with a cummerbund and bow tie on, oh and then my explained God. in the interview what, that that I felt very overdressed, and I did not appreciate them asking me to wear a tuxedo. And then they said, <laughs> "We did not ask for that." And I, that's the whole interview is just me. <laughs> and, and I'm like, why am I wearing this? Like, very, uh, I, I, that I, relationship I, did not very last. Good. Oh, that's she was the good. worst person, and I'm so happy that I did that. It was really it's good. like the it's like the Seinfeld pirate shirt interview <laughs> yeah very much oh, so. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. oh my yeah. goodness yeah well crazy bike that was a fun question wherever you are and i hope that you <laughs> get the crazy. help you need crazy mike there are a lot of resources out a lot there of resources to help you. yeah reach Please out, reach out. <laughs> uh we got time for one more let's see if we can go out on a really fun one here's one from tom and they want to know what is your all-time favorite movie I'm going to go first because mine is boring and adult. Well, but then I'll spice it up at the end. My favorite movie is called Broadcast News. It stars Holly Hunter, William yes, Hurt, is. and uh, <laughs> Albert Brooks. It's awesome, and it's very adult, and it's very funny. But I will say my second favorite movie of all time is Showgirls. I saw Showgirls. Is four times, five times in the theater in three different states of the union. Oh my I saw God. it originally in Orlando when I was doing all that. And then I went to New York and I said to my friend, we are going to see this movie and I'm going to make jokes from the first second and just, <laughs> and just right. know that. Get used to it. And then I came back and they were doing kind of a drag queen, drag queen Rocky horror version of it at this, ah. um, theater so i went two or three times to that it is the most magnificent piece of crap just ever it's so amazing it's a cult classic it is so amazing you know what i i loved showgirls before it was a cult classic i was in on the ground floor right. charter member of the cult exactly right. you, so, you should you should see her cryptocurrency in showgirls it is man <laughs> she is, it's show coin to the moon, yeah. as they say, show right? Coin. To the moon, mm. <laughs> show coin. Uh, but what do you do when your life exceeds your dreams? Keep it to yourself. Dance. Oh, exactly. God. Oh, uh, God. Right. It's a great, great movie. Check it out. Flash over substance. You make the call. But Patty, you and me are best friends from now on till the end of time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got another best movie, all-time favorite movie? The Mighty Ducks, duh. Oh, yeah, of <laughs> I'm course. Kidding. I'm just Absolutely. kidding. I'm just kidding. No, Enough I'm not, I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna be the. Gonna be the stoner of the bunch and go to the Big Lebowski because they quote it at least once a day in some way, shape, or form throughout my day. So if it's something that I've been doing for that long, it must have done something to my brain. I or the weed did. Well, you know, we'll never we know. Say for real, yeah. We'll never know. You know, expungements are real, people. Many Things a time, go away. <laughs> as a, as a very small statured man, many a time, I've people bump into me, and I've had to say, "I got a beverage here, man." Man, yeah, that's it. I like that. 
Okay, he just passed away, so director Robert Downey Sr. made my favorite movie ever, which is called Putney Swope. It's a black and white movie from 1969. Check it out. It'll blow your mind. Putney Swope. S-W-O-P-E. Yes. Yes, that is uh, that is uh, fantastic. He also made Up the Academy, uh, uh, a derided comedy, but one of my favorites. But the first R-rated movie I ever saw in the theaters because it was the Mad Magazine movie, so I was able to convince my mom to go see it. Look, it's friendly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of was. So, uh, Stephen, what's yours? God, I, I, I hate to be like uh, the most boring person in the history of the world, but I'm sitting at my desk. I'm surrounded by Star Wars toys. Uh, mm. I, and I feel like yes. I'd be just lying through my teeth if I did. <laughs> Short circuit. <laughs> like, no. uh, it's too bad, it's too bad your computer doesn't have a back-facing camera that you could just flip to the... <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, without moving from my chair, you know, like, it's, I just have... They're, <laughs> out, they're just yeah. everywhere in here. Um, I am in the middle of watching all of Star Wars chronologically. Oh. The full nueve, as they call it. The whole deal. I'm in the middle of the Rebels right full now. Full Nueve. <laughs> and, yeah, and, Ste and Steven, yeah. just for the record, though, are we talking Star Wars? Oh, he's talking original. Four? He's talking, no, he's, no, he's yeah, talking yeah. original. Yeah, yeah. Four, four, five. Uh, yeah, the original. Four, five, yeah, six. The, I mean, yeah, the, one, the one I still... Star Wars. It, yeah, Star Wars. Not the yeah, those, Star Wars. Those, are, uh, those are the ones that I'm, that I'm uh, like, emotionally... Can, like, I just rewatched uh the the first like a new hope like just like a couple days ago and i think maybe yesterday i was watching empire strikes back while i was working like it just i have it on a lot because i just i don't there's something about that creative stuff like the and what's so great is too uh, that i i love about the stupid business that we're all in is that like the longer that you're in something and the more that you love something the more that you get to like you know like be a part of it in certain weird ways like um i have a podcast and we've had three or four original uh trilogy oh, wow. on the show and um and then had like you know, like Ahmed Best came on to talk about, you know, going through all the emotional ups and downs of Jar Jar Binks, you know, and we had a uh, Deep Roy on the show, who's the only person in history to play Yoda in the costume, like as yep. in like the full thing, wearing a mask and walking <laughs> behind uh, Luke for like half a second in one shot in Return of the Jedi, like um, the most, I just... I, I love that. And then uh, just recently I, I became really close with the, the guy who um, is uh, he's been like seven different roles in Mandalorian. He's like always playing the robots. Like he played like the C-3PO teacher droid. His name is Chris, Chris Bartlett. And like this guy yeah. flew um, the Mando's like ship in the heist. He was the robot for that. He was uh, like, he's just a, he's constantly the guy getting, you know, playing, uh, playing the robots and the droids and the, you know, fighters and stuff. Just so like, so you just kind of keep getting closer and closer to like a thing that you love and it makes it more fun, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It could not have been any other movie, Stephen. It had to be Star Wars. It had yeah. to be. It had to be. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, Tom. Absolutely great question. Guys, this has been an absolute blast. Any final words before we go? Thanks, Patty. Appreciate it. Yeah, this was so much fun. Yeah. And it's so nice to meet you guys in, in person. Lori, it's great to see you as as always. I, I, I adore you. You know that. Me this as well. It's yeah, good to see your faces. Fun. And good to talk to the fans. I miss doing these cones. I miss hugs more than anything. Mm. So this is kind of as close. Yeah. As I can get at the moment. This Yo, bumps for all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's Slow down, my, Chewy. Uh, it's been my absolute That's pleasure it. to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us. And thank you for all your great questions. We hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And remember, smiles are free, so spend them often.